She is one of the more esteemed guests we've had on the show because she is the holder of a Guinness Book of World Records record um, for the most interviews in a 24-hour period. And uh, she's quite the enterprising entrepreneur in her own right, uh, producer for uh, Salem Radio, and among other things, host of a show on Bold TV. She's just like, she's like a multimedia mega mogul at this point. But uh, Pav, how are you? It's John. Long time no see. How you been? No, I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm very good. Yeah, just chilling, you know. Are you forgetting New about York. us little people ever, ever since you became an award-winning author now? Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, I could never. I, ne- I could never. I love you guys. Okay. Um, Pavlina is the author of uh, 20 Things Every 20-something Should Know. Um, give me, um, I know we got to talk about, you know, top five, int- top five issues most important to millennials. Um, but give me like the crib notes version because, you know, I don't know if I need to read this because I'm not a 20-something anymore. You know what well, I mean? Well, the book is great for anyone that like wants to be re-motivated, wants to, you know, if they're starting a business or if they're just like entrepreneurial spirits or, you know, if they're, if, if they just want to be motivated basically. Um, but John, I huh. feel like you could write, you know, five books Got on, it. on the topic, but yeah. I, oh yeah. If I wrote a book, 50 things, every 50 something should know. Um, we should do it. Then 20 year olds can read it and be like, oh man, I'm doing this now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I kind of touch on that in the book. Like, I talk about budgeting, how they should do with their money. Like, oh, no, no, I'm not talking about that. Of- that, that, that. That's too responsible for me. You know what I mean? I'm either in my 50s or my teens. You know what I mean? My maturity level is somewhere around 17 years old. You know what I mean? But my brain. Yeah is uh, deteriorating faster than Joe Biden's at this point. But, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> you know, um, the millennial class, I don't know. I, I didn't want to disclose your actual age, so I don't know if you're going on the millennial or Gen Z or, you know, but you, I, you're always my favorite millennial, and it has a good alliteration to it from, you know, a marketing standpoint, the M and the M. Um, what are the five things most important to millennials in this election? Yeah, so I cl- I am a Gen Z, but I like to talk about millennials because they they're a little bit more important, um, you know, as far as our economy and jobs, and they always kind of get more of the the notice anyway. But the five things that matter most to millennials right now is their college debt because that just seems to never go away for them. Um, the economy, of course, is huge for them. So many have lost their jobs, and a lot are you know still employed and they're you know go- blowing through their savings. So that's obviously a huge one. Um, healthcare, especially mental health care, is really, really important for Gen Zs and millennials, um, just because that is such an important part of what they, you know, what they need. Like they want to make sure that they, if they have a therapy, you know, if they need that, they can get it. Like they want to make sure that that's a part of um, what they're getting when it comes to this election. Also, climate control is a big thing for millennials and Gen Zs. We've seen tons of protests on that. Um, and they are very outspoken on on their views on that and how they want it to be addressed. And also like the authenticity, like I think um, they want someone that they can trust. They want to be like friends with them in a way. And I think one thing you can't, you know, critique Trump on is how authentic he is. Like you, you're getting what you're getting and that's not something you ever have to worry about because I think millennials and Gen Zs, when it comes to politicians, like we all know like the standard politician, we don't trust them, we don't like them. And I think, you know, millennials and Gen Z's are the first ones to really be like, we're not cool with this. And that's why they like AOC so much is because she's so relatable. She's very, you know, very much in touch with the millennials and and they resonate with that. I know. But um, in your view, is Joe Biden authentic? Um, No, not that I've seen. <laughs> I haven't seen where it, it feels like he is just trying to, uh, you know, the whole thing. When I first saw that interview he did where. He said, um, if you don't vote Democrat, you like you ain't black or whatever like yeah. that. Like, what are you saying? Like, there have just been certain things that have just been so cringy. Um, and it just feels like he's trying too hard to kind of get us to vote for him in a way. Um, so, no, I, I not that I've seen. <laughs> I, I just want to see like your true authentic self and like how you're going to run the country that you actually care about it. And that has not been displayed from him. In yet. your in your opinion, I'm not asking you to weigh in on your politics, but in your opinion, um, Donald Trump has been in office a grand total in life three and a half years, and Joe yeah. Biden has been in office 47 years. Um, yeah, this is so. Just in like you you know how younger people think. Is that mm-hmm. you know 
quantitatively, like, is there a way to say who's done better? Yeah, I think achievements are a really good way to look at that. And I, when I looked at Joe Biden's achievements over the past, like, almost 50 years, it feels like, I don't see where a lot of these things have been addressed. If police reform was so important to them, why didn't they do that during the eight years of the Obama, Obama administration? Um, there is just Great so Jesus many different preach. things. Where it's, yeah, where it's just like, why was this not covered if it was so important to you guys then? Whereas everything Trump has done, and I'm an independent, but like, I just like to look at the facts. I like to look at you know who's being successful, who's doing the most moving around, getting things done for the country and care about the country. And, and Trump has done way so much in the past three years no doubt about it all right now um let me ask you something today's national matchmaker day i know i don't oh, know if cute. you heard okay. that um so you know everyone's supposed to go out and do a little match for somebody or try to do something like that um right. i was telling jess that i have so many friends on both sides of the aisle in sexes male and women who say that these dating apps are just so crazy. People lie, different Word. person, the <laughs> pictures are all off, and there's all, it's always a scam, a fake name, this, that, and the other, all this crap I hear, right? So I was telling right. Jess that my idea is this is strictly a woman-controlled app, okay? Because I okay. hear girls that say guys, you know, that they actually scoped them out, they looked at their social, they thought he was cute, they knew a little somebody who knew him, and then, like, then some message comes in which they're happy. And then all of a sudden, like, when they read it, it's like, yo, beautiful, what are you up to? And they're like, right. oh, my God, forget about it. Like, it's over That's right there, it's right? It's just so bad. So here's, my, here's what I'm thinking. Guys are paying, like, a monthly $20 or whatever to go swipe through a bunch of women that you don't like, right? So right. what if the women say, hey, I will allow you to send me a text... Um, if you meet the following five qualities, if you're this, this, and this, um, your text will go through to me, but it will cost you five dollars just for me to read your text. Okay. Yes. Okay. That and will then, out a lot of um, the you give them along with that a suggested text to send you to say, if now you're doing good so far, send me this. See if they're smart enough to just copy and paste, right? Send me this. And I will consider responding. And then all of a sudden, boom, the guy copy and paste and it comes in. You go, oh, he met five criteria. He paid five dollars. He follows instructions. He looks good. We're on a roll here. You already got four affirmations on the books before you even have to deal with one moment of clown showness. This is what I'm saying, John. You think of all these great ideas. That's brilliant. I can't stand I, I like apps. it. I, I need help. I need some culture. millennial help. I'm, a, I'm an idea man. You know what I mean? I'm like Ringling Brothers Bonham. You know what I mean? I'm like the idea man. Uh, I just keep absolutely. the show yes. going and all these collateral yeah. things spit out. We need follow-up, but you girls would know how to do this best. You know what I mean? Yes, and I should get on that. We should get on I that. I really thing. think that if you actually told the guy, say this to me to start it off, and they were smart enough to do it, boundaries. it would get them like kind of at least one step closer to what they hoped to do, but they would have already blown themselves up three times already. So it's like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, love is a battlefield. You know what I mean, <laughs> True. Pat? It is. <laughs> it's definitely difficult, and I feel like... So many millennials and Gen Zs have struggling. They they struggle with dating and like millennials like and Gen Zs. Like what about us midlife dating? crisis people? You know what I mean. I'm trying to split my I'm trying to split my stock right now. Do a two for one split. I go back to 25 and start over. You know what I mean. Yeah. Get some new hair plugs. Get a little liposuction. Put on a speedo. Open a jet ski stand in Bermuda and live happily Absolutely. ever after. You wow. know what I mean. That's what that I'm thinking like about plan. doing. <laughs> That sounds brilliant. I, yeah. I support that, John. <laughs> all right. Um, aside from all the gibberish I fit into this interview, Pavlina's uh, views and perspective have always been on the money. You can catch her all over the place. You're on Bold TV right now. Um, yes. And then she's got a podcast. And if God had a podcast, she'd be the host of it because she is the host of it. Um, and finally, of course, she's one of the producers of the Mike Gallagher show on uh, Salem Radio Network. So... Talk about an overachiever. This girl's been doing it since she's a little kid. So uh, thank you, Dawn. You're the best. And uh, yes, hopefully we'll so see much. you soon. Let me know if Absolutely. you want to do the, uh, you and Jess want to do the female controlled dating app. I think we could do it. I think we could too. Jess and I together with all of your ideas, like it's money. It's perfect. Okay. Well, let's see. It is Money Monday. Let's see what happens. <laughs>